Welcome Yamhill County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host, Howie Harkema, and our tagline is, and how we do win. Today, I have this wonderful gentleman, Charles Hillstad, who's a local photographer. Thank you so much for being here, Charles. Well, thank you for having me. And I've got to talk about you just for a minute here first. So, Charles is a retired attorney at law. He's the president of the Amhill County Historical Society. He's on the Economic Redevelopment Committee for McMinnville. He's on the Advisory Committee for the City and for the Chamber of Commerce. And in 1981, he was um, one of the people who brought the sci-fi convention to Denver, Colorado. <laughs> but he's also this avid photographer who happens to have some of his photographs um, in some of the local galleries, including the Blue Quail just down the street with Amanda Pawanka, who, which I went in and looked at the photos and was just blown away. But he also gave us some photographs for the Peace Village of what, what you shot uh, for the video coming up soon and um, made sure that um, we're going to have some for the Harvest Fest um, uh, video that we shot. And so thank you so much for being here, Charles. Glad to be here, happy to help. Uh, like to take photographs. Uh, it's not a great business plan if you're giving your <laughs> photographs away, but uh, I, I do it for the, uh, for the fun of it. So what drew you to photography to begin with? Uh, well, as I had said earlier, it was <laughs> girls. Uh, I, I was in high school and I wasn't the captain of the football team, so how do you meet really good looking girls? Yeah. And I thought, well, if I have a camera, they'll want me to take their photographs. So I joined the uh, school newspaper, Ashland High School. And uh, they gave me a Polaroid camera so I could now have an excuse to take their photograph, tell them how beautiful they are, get their name, telephone number. Worked pretty well. And they're instantaneously out. Yeah. So you get to share them right then. And uh, then when it shows up in the newspaper, they're very grateful. They remember that, and uh, they'll let you take more photographs. Yes, I'm a model photographer. Would you like to let me take some <laughs> photos of you? <laughs> so tell us about the camera club. Well, the, uh, there's camera clubs all over, but the local one's called the uh, Yamhill Valley Camera Club. Uh, it meets twice a month. Uh, it's down at the Historical Society Heritage Center just out of... A uh, town uh, there along uh, Highway 18. Yes. Uh, the the second uh, Tuesday at 6:30 is the competition night, and you can bring in uh, three uh, photographs, and they'll judge, and they'll be uh, deciding on uh, first, second, third, and a couple honorable mentions, and then those go on to higher competition. There's a regional competition for the uh, Columbia Council of Camera Clubs, of which we're a member. The fourth Tuesday, uh, same time, 6:30. Is the critique night. So bring in some photographs, uh, have the whole club uh, tell you how, in a very friendly way, in which you might be able to improve that. Sure. So you bring uh, ones you have some questions about. Uh, it's a relatively inexpensive thing. Uh, the 25 bucks a month not only gets you that, but uh, field trips. Uh, uh, we have a lot of activities that are going on, uh, other kind of challenges. And it's of all caliber of uh, photographers, whether you're a, a, a newbie or a pro or a dedicated amateur, we try to have stuff for, for all of them and uh, make them glad that they're there. So um, if you belong to the Historical Society and you're a member, do you also have to pay for this as a separate entity? Uh, yeah, that the Yamhill Valley Camera Club is 100% separate from okay. the uh, Historical Society. Sure. By coincidence, we uh, moved the location down to the Heritage Center. Right. And uh, uh, that's where it's uh, meeting at the moment. That's fantastic. Um, just the fact that you get a critique and to improve your own photos and all of that stuff. Do, does anyone still shoot with film and, and have a dark room or anything? Uh, there's probably a few people around, but it's not very convenient. Uh, you can uh, compete uh, using prints, although the local camera club doesn't do that too much, but there's a variety of venues where your print uh, can uh, compete. Uh, but uh, the judging is uh, most of the year electronically. So you bring it in on a flash card, stick sure. it to the computer, project it, and uh, uh, it goes from there. The world of digital. Um, 
So you have photography classes. Um, is that part of the camera club, or is that a separate thing? They kind of arose out of that because we were trying to develop some things for the, the new folks. So when I had my last show, which was a couple of months down at the uh, uh, Narthex Gallery, uh, I said, I'll give some free classes. And one was on composition. This is for anybody, whether you're an, an artist painting, yes. or you have a camera like this, or your cell phone. It's composing the scene uh, to be aesthetically pleasing. Yes. So I have a class for that. I also have a more advanced class on editing. You'll see some of the photographs that come up with some rather severe editing. Uh, some photographers say, well, no, you got to be a purist uh, and just uh, show the public what you capture in your camera, but the camera's a lie all by itself. Yes. So I, I like to have fun editing. That was one of the big attractions, why I got back into it heavily after getting kind of bored there for a decade or two uh, back when it was uh, film. I was kind of a film snob, uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, digital uh, rekindled the excitement. And I, I give those classes for free. So if there's anybody out there, whether you're a, a club, a school, uh, a, a high school camera club, I'll come and uh, give you half an hour, an hour, whatever you'd like on uh, a variety of topics. Fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Well, glad to do it. Enjoy it. So, in large prints that you give to your uh, nonprofits for fundraising purposes, I've seen some of them, and they're beautiful. Would well, you like to talk about? Well, this one? What, what happens is um, I print that this was uh, entered in the state fair. It did not win, although I did have a third place uh, one that uh, won at the state fair. But after I, I show them a time or two, I've run out of wall space at home, so. Uh, <laughs> What do you do with those? And uh, generally what I try to do is find some sort of charity that might like them for a silent auction and uh, just contact me and I'll see if I can provide something for you. Fantastic. So you have a Facebook page and we're gonna bring up the banner for it right now. Um, and what resides there and why? Well, uh, that, uh, a lot of people don't like Facebook, but I say, look, uh, it's a great place. I can uh, upload a lot of photographs easily. It won't clog up your computer or mine. You look at them when you want. I try to put new uh, things on there every day, and it's not all mine. If I see a wonderful photographer, I'll put a link to it and say, you know, go look here and you'll find somebody else. It's strictly photography. Right. Uh, no politics, no ethnicity, no religion, no sales. But if you like photography, I'm hoping you'll find something to, uh, to like there. And uh, what I, I created the website uh, for was, since we have all this divisiveness going on, I, I wanted one place in my life where we're looking for what we share, what brings us together, yes. as opposed to what tears us apart. So uh, children, animals, babies, landscapes, nature, history, architecture, uh, gentle humor, uh, these are, are things that, uh, whether you're uh, you know, a, a Japanese sumo wrestler, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're going to smile or laugh or enjoy those. So. I have people on uh, Facebook who are friends. I, I can't even pronounce their name, let alone read it. Uh, but I, I'm glad to share with them. We're so glad you do. And uh, be sure and go look at Chuck Hillstad on Facebook. Um, and if you're a photographer, um, maybe they can send you a link. And I, I also, if it's a difficult uh, or unusual shot, I'll put some technical notes in so you have a clue as to how I might have uh, made it, so if you want to try it yourself. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through about 40 different photographs that you've <laughs> taken out of the nine gillion that uh, <laughs> you have taken. So let's go ahead, Caroline, and go to that first, uh, first one. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. Actually, he has won me uh, several awards, a uh, substantial amount of money. This is a local uh, guy. I like him a lot. He's a fellow member of the board of directors of the Camera Club. That's Dave Rucker. Yes. And uh, we stepped out of a board meeting of the Historical Society, and I said, hey, can I take a photograph of you? Post him in front of that tree. That's the result. Uh, what a, a great guy as well as what a great subject. Yeah, he's a great guy, and he works at YCAP, and he also um, is the vice president of he the is. Historical Society. So it's great to see, and that's a great image of him. I love the black and white and, and the contrast. Well, I like his father a lot as well. His father was in the camera club, and I, I, I miss his father, but I, 
I've got the sun. Yes, you do. So let's move on, Caroline. Um, I try to capture a whole variety of things. Uh, this one I turned into kind of a canvas print. I, I wanted it to look uh, Tuscan. Yes, it does. Uh, and this actually won uh, several awards as well, uh, but uh, it's uh, on the, uh, the hills kind of south of uh, Amity. And I just like the gentle rolling. I, I uh, worked with it a little bit to uh, increase that roly-poly look that you see. Well, it looks like you got it right at the golden hour, too, because... Uh, there was a shaft of sunlight <laughs> hitting that yellow uh, house. I was driving along uh, that, uh, that highway linking to uh, Lincoln. And i got to stop for that. I'm kind of a danger when I'm driving <laughs> at that time of the night. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, one of the great things that has happened to me is getting to know Edwina Castle and her, her gallery ballet and tap school. I asked her if I could come and photograph one of her uh, presentations that uh, she does. I said, let me roam around backstage. I give her all of the, the photographs that I take. I said, I just want the ability to use them myself for competition. I love uh, this one. Uh, I particularly love the little ballerinas because they, they kind of understand the concept, but the execution escapes them. And uh, this one I, I titled, It Should Have Been Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And I saw some of your prints of some of these recently. So go ahead, Caroline. Uh, this was an early one. You know, sometimes I, I take shots and uh, I, I really think they're going to be great and they do absolutely nothing and other ones are just kind of a throwaway. Oh, well, let's submit this one. Uh, astonishing uh, to me. This one early on, it was just a big dog. In fact, it's the title of it, Big Dog. <laughs> was sitting in the middle of a parking lot in Cannon Beach and uh, uh, it looked fierce, but he was very friendly. And uh, actually, this is something called layering. I took out all the color except the eyes. Yes. And it's beautiful, and the contrast and such is just the hairs and everything. You can just see every literal detail. Uh, animals are something I really enjoy photographing. Okay, Caroline. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I call uh, this one uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Rustler's, uh, Rogue's the Rogue's Gallery. Yes. And uh, I was just capturing some really interesting chickens, but I thought, wow, these guys look kind of fierce. They'd probably rob a bank if they could. <laughs> uh, this won a lot of awards. This has actually been my biggest seller. I'm not surprised. It's fantastic. Um, I'm going to go back at some point and uh, make a square and complete all sides of the square with different chickens. Well, being a, a photographer and a Photoshop user. Are these individual chickens that you dropped into a back, black background? Every one of them was in a cage at the state fair. It was really tough trying to shoot through the bars and then uh, compositing yeah. it all together. But I, I thought it turned out uh, worthwhile, particularly the chicken on the uh, left of the screen. That's fantastic. Okay, Caroline. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, this is just across from Linfield College. There was a beautiful tree there. Um, I've got a nice shot of it uh, with just the ordinary type of shot. It's a, uh, a pink uh, dogwood, but uh, playing around in uh, uh, some solarization, some other techniques uh, mm -hmm. generated that and won some awards. I'm always surprised what wins awards and what doesn't, but uh, this seemed to be uh, well thought of. Beautiful. Okay. Ooh. More of the girls. I, I actually took about eight shots of this little grouping here. Every one of them could have been printed. But if you take, uh, you know, kids, uh, don't let them know you're photographing them and just wait for a while. They're going to do all kinds of things that show they're eminently uh, cute, lovable. And uh, they're just, they were just standing around waiting and uh, they're so much fun to photograph. It's a great shot. Okay. Uh, this one won uh, a top honor for the uh, Nature Photographers of the Pacific Northwest. They have a convention twice a year, and um, I called it uh, The Maze. Uh, <laughs> notice this uh, little earwig trying to yes. work his way out of all these uh, waves of uh, petals. 
So do you have a macro lens that you use for this type of? No, uh, we'll talk about my favorite camera later, but uh, that camera uh, only costs about 350 bucks. It'll focus down to one inch. Wow, that's fantastic. You don't need uh, a, a macro with that camera. It's also got a great telephoto. I can shoot folks, uh, uh, I probably shouldn't be saying this because now they're gonna be nervous every time they see me with the camera, and many are, but I, I can photograph a face from a block away and uh, uh, comes out just looking like the earlier one you sure. saw. Okay. Uh, this was an early prize winner as well. Um, I'm just looking for simplification. Um, uh, these are kind of circles um, uh, seen from above. It's kind of a different view. I like black and white. I like color. Uh, I like to play around. There's not a whole lot that I changed on this one, although I did cut out some other uh, limbs that would have been visible. Sure. I was just walking across a bridge next to the sewage treatment pond in Cannon Beach, looked over the bridge, saw that, thought, hey, you never see this looking down from above. Right. And it's fantastic because it actually is in color, right? Well, it was in color, uh, but uh, no, this is just black and white. I, I desaturated it, took out the green. Okay. Uh, this was my first two-page spread in a national photography magazine, and again, it's the ballerinas from the Gallery Theater. They were just standing around, and I, I always loved art when I was in college, and uh, popped in my mind uh, Edgar Degas, mm -hmm. uh, a French uh, painter. He did uh, ballet. Yeah. He has uh, paintings of pink tutus yeah. and blue tutus. I thought, hey, I got them both together. <laughs> All in one. Uh, Popular Photography Magazine gave me 300 bucks plus uh, printed that. Awesome. Uh, these were just some kids uh, practicing for a parade here in Cannabis. It was at that uh, uh, first uh, federal and I happened to notice this uh, one little guy, uh, his eye was peeking out. Uh, this one, uh, an award uh, from the uh, uh, the Community Cultural Coalition, the Yamhill Cultural Coalition. Yes. Uh, but uh, I just kind of called it Eye on the Drum. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Sometimes the hardest thing about photography is picking out the title. Boy, howdy. Okay, Caroline. Uh, this is in Astoria, right next to the Columbia River. And the original had, uh, you can see the mountains in the background, mm -hmm. you can see the river, but I wanted to reduce it to its absolute elementary aspects, pure black, pure white, uh, and uh, I just like the uh, shapes. Uh, I called it uh, fence line. A lot of us back in the day when we were shooting with film um, used Cotolith Ortho, which was either black and white and no gray tones whatsoever to accomplish the same thing. Um, it, so that's very cool. That's very cool. Um, next. Uh, this was one of the ones that I think won an award for the, uh, from the Oregonian, their annual garden competition. I called it uh, Ejecta because uh, it <laughs> reminded me of a meteor splash yeah. uh, on, on Earth. Uh, I've got another one I call Extinction Event. It's also it's, uh, the, the sex organs of a flower. Uh, but uh, I, I really like that. In fact, that was my first love. Uh, it was shooting flowers. Um, and somebody said, well, do you only shoot flowers? And I thought about that. I said, well, you know, you're right. Maybe I'll do some other things. But my first love is still flowers. And I probably have a third of the photographs are on Facebook. And there's about 100 albums there. And about 14,000 photographs are floral. That's beautiful. Uh, this is back at the Historical uh, Society. Their uh, school happened to uh, see some light. It was coming through the window, bouncing off something on the desk, illuminating her face. It was a, a bit of a work trying to uh, uh, bring down the, uh, the brightness of it so uh, it didn't blow out all the, uh, the detail mm -hmm. of her face. But um, I'm just uh, assembling a bunch of uh, stuff to give to the... Uh, Historical Society uh, Museum, just to see if they want to uh, to have it in their permanent oh, collection. Oh, fantastic. Uh, this one's called A Quiet Day on the Hood Canal. Uh, this is another one where this is actually a tiny piece of the bigger photograph. Okay. And uh, I just like that boat out there, but it was really tiny in the original. But as I blew it up, I started losing resolution. So I thought, all right, well, to heck with the resolution. We'll just uh, go ahead and 
work with it, let's make it look like a painting. It does look like a painting. It's and it, fantastic. It's really nice on canvas. I bet. Uh, another shot from the uh, Historical uh, Society, but this one's over in the Lafayette Museum. Most people don't even know we have a museum well, in Talk Lafayette. about that for a second. Uh, well, there's uh, like 60,000 square feet of museum space uh, south of town, but in Lafayette, there's the Poling Church, which is where this is located, right. uh, and also a log cabin and a, uh, another building. But these were just sitting on the countertop. Biggest problem was getting rid of everything behind it. But right. I, didn't, I didn't move them or anything. That's exactly the way they were. I think this won a, a few awards as well. Uh, they were white. Uh, and I played with it. So this is actually a color shot manipulated. Yes. Okay. Uh, again, the close-up. Um, I think I call this one, If Flowers Could Cry. Mm -hmm. uh, this was at the, I think this is a, a Dahlia, or a peony uh, might peony, be. Peony, yeah. And uh, I, I thought that dripping was very unusual, and it kind of reminded me of the uh, Little Shop of Horrors for some <laughs> yeah, reason. Exactly. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. Yeah. It's sad. He's hungry. Yeah. Drooling. Uh, sometimes it's just straight photography. Uh, I call this uh, uh, trumpeting, and they look like trumpets to me. I, I might make uh, mention that I, I love Ansel Adams. I think he has really great stuff, but uh, he was very in intimidating. I, I just didn't think I could ever be that good. But uh, I was a, a chapter chairman of an eight-state Sierra Club, and I, I came into contact with the work of Elliot Porter. He did a lot of the Sierra Club calendars. Mm -hmm back in uh, the uh, the 60s or so, raised a lot of money, but uh, it wasn't the grand landscapes of a lot of nature photographers, and it wasn't super close up. It was what I call the middle distance. Yes. And it was often, uh, even back a little further than this, it was the it was showing the, the subject matter in context of wherever it is. Right. And uh, I, I like that a lot. I shoot a lot of that middle distance. The, you can see a lot of that Elliot Porter influence in my work. Caroline? Uh, this was my first big win f uh, with the Oregonian annual contest. Yes. Got me a full page. This is my backyard, uh, just a, uh, a dogwood. I walked out there and I thought, hey, that looks like a, uh, a, a collection of doves. So I called that uh, Flight of Fancy. Perfect. Uh, Bird-like. This is also a neighborhood shot, and another of the big full-page ones at the Oregonian. Uh, I think I called that one Among Strangers. And that's a lace-leaf maple red one. Uh, yeah, and an oak leaf just fell on top of it uh, during the fall. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, try to reduce it to simplicity. Back uh, when I was a kid, I remember seeing this Busby Berkeley movie where this lady was coming down the stairs and... Uh, there was these hands coming out of the floor holding instruments, and that uh, stayed with me all those decades. And this is actually a shot at the uh, Tualatin Pumpkin Regatta, and it was the high school band. There was you know, 30, 40 of them on stage, but and looking at the photographs on my computer, I thought, let me see if I can single out just the instruments. Mm -hmm. And so those are just the flutes, and I think I call that one highfalutin. <laughs> That sounds like you, Charles. Yeah, puns are a birth defect of mine. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, this is uh, Cornucopia. Uh, this is at the farmer's market. A, a lot of the stuff that you see on my website are, are shot within a mile of here. Yeah. And I just liked all the shapes and the colors. Uh, and uh, this will be on sale. It's not there at the moment, but... Uh, and be putting that up at the Blue Quail because it's, yes. it's a it's a nice framed piece. And well, I love that still life. It's beautiful. Um, the next one is I'm trying to reduce it to simplistic uh, elements of you know what's a flower, single color, just the blue tones, and it's just laying on a piece of cloth. Uh, so uh, like that. Uh, here's more of the Ansel Adams shot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is just Highway 26 coming over the coast range and uh, all the ridge lines of the fog yep. uh, reduce that to black and white, although they're pretty much black and white to yeah, begin with. Yeah, pretty much, huh? Yeah. Ooh. 
Um, I discovered something that if in editing uh, there's some yellow in the photograph, if you uh, just uh, deeply saturate the yellow, it looks like things are glowing yes. from within. Uh, so uh, I think I call this glowing. I can't remember the exact title of it, but they really did look like they were lit from within. Absolutely. Uh, here's a more simplistic one. This is actually a fairly early one. You know, not some of my best work, but you know, some people seem to like it. It's at Cannon Beach. I'm looking out over the ocean. Sun's going down, and you know, everybody's seen a million uh, sun sets, but uh, had to be um, uh, some dandelions growing there. So let's shoot through the dandelions, see what happens. That's a beautiful shot. This is another attempt to make the flowers glow. Again, yeah. Uh, they're kind of dark. Uh, I, I like uh, what's called the blue hour. There's uh, the golden hour just after sunset. The blue hour is after that. Right. I can use flash and illuminate the subject matter, but everything behind it's blacked out. Right. Uh, I, I really like the deep saturation tones you get when there's a black background. Yeah, it's awesome. Go ahead, Caroline. <laughs> This is in New Zealand um, at a, a graveyard. Uh, it's almost black and white. In fact, everything is black and white except for the dandelions. Mm. Uh, I, I like looking for things that uh, make a statement, and I thought this certainly made a, a statement. Well, it's such a contrast, and you barely make out the color at all. Go ahead, Caroline. Um, sometimes it's just the angle of things uh, you look. There was a, a movie called Day of the Triffids. Yes, I remember that movie quite well. And um, I, I didn't care for the movie, but I liked the book. And for some reason that popped in my mind. I was shooting up at plants. I like to make them sometimes appear bigger than they actually are. Of course. It's not really a macro shot, but it's a different perspective. In fact, that's an important thing. Uh, instead of just shooting everything from uh, shoulder height, you know, get down, get above, get on the side, uh, get closer, change the, uh, change the perspective. Here's an Elliot Porter type of shot, uh, kind of showing the uh, locale, uh, but I like the diagonal of the, the leaves of the, uh, it's getting toward fall, they're kind of illuminated against the dark background of the, the ferns. Um, Caroline, let's stop there. Uh, go ahead, run that Medusa, the next one, and we'll stop. Um, th this was just kind of a fun one. Call it Medusa. Uh, it's actually right outside my kitchen window, and uh, uh, it's a um, uh, clematis It's pot. beautiful. And I love the shadow um, or silhouette. Um, because we're, we've run out of time, um, when did you switch to digital for format? Um, about a 2008, uh, I was still shooting uh, film, but I brought a, a little tiny fit-in-the-pocket uh, digital, and I was just going to record things with that, uh, but I had so much fun editing that I ultimately switched about then, and I've been using it ever since. So what was your first camera? Uh, a box camera, Kodak box camera, about 1955, mom gave me and said, here, have fun. I did. And um, what's your current favorite camera? Uh, my current favorite camera is, is this one. It's a Nikon P610. This is actually the fifth one I've had of this series. This is when I discovered a camera that's only about 350 bucks at Costco. Mm -hmm. It shoots uh, down to about one inch, and it's got the equivalent of about a 1,400 millimeter lens, uh, which would be hanging out to about here, sure. and it fits in the coat pocket. That's fantastic. Uh, in fact, everything that's won an award so far has been shot with this or its predecessors. So how many photographs do you think you've taken since uh, high school? Uh, well, <laughs> if, if we go back to the Kodak uh, one, I, I couldn't even guess, but maybe a million. I, I say that because I've got about 300,000 on my computer, right. and there's 14,000 on Facebook. Right. I'm not surprised, and yet you consider yourself an amateur photographer. Uh, definitely amateur, still learning. Yeah, but amateur, um, after looking even at just that small <laughs> amount out of your million photographs, you're much more than an amateur. Well, keep in mind, the, the million includes uh, safety shots uh, sure. and, and uh, all that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some of my favorites are the 14,000 on Facebook. So, Charles... 
It's been fantastic. If they want to visit uh, the Blue Quail and see some of your work there, is there anywhere else that they can also see it? At the moment, no. I've been very fortunate. I've had two uh, one-man shows within the past year, but at the moment, that's the only place okay. uh, they're, they're available. Well, thank you for being such a fantastic photographer, number <laughs> one. Number two, thank you for being in this community. Well, thank you very you much. Do. Thank you.